go back, I'm like, kind of like, through the middle of the old little town. Is that what you're not going to That's uh, Big Mike. Hi, Mike. How are you?
today. Don't cry, okay? <laughs> Don't stand till the bride and the dad come. Okay, you got it. Thank you. 
glasses in the way to be good. <laughs> and we're happy that the people love you and came out to, you know, see you exchange vows. That's a, that's a good thing. See, mean what you say. Of death do us part. Mean that. Because I'll tell you why there's so many people that get divorced. One out of two marriages that used to end in divorce in America. Back in 1908, one out of 40. <laughs> then you got in the 20s and 30s, and then it began to increase. And now it's one out of two. So you guys be the two that make it <laughs> right. Not the, you're not going to cook everything perfect, all right? But he'll eat it. I always say, whatever my wife cooks, I eat it. <laughs> and uh, that's why I'm a big grown boy now. <laughs> well, I'm going to read to you a few instructions from the Word of God. First, God says it's not good for man to be alone. <coughs> Loneliness is a very difficult thing. I knew a man that had several million dollars, but he didn't have anybody to share it with. And I had his funeral last oh, a few months ago. But he lived a lonely life, this man, you know, had all this money. And that's not going to make you happy. See, it's caring about God. Caring about each other. Now, the reason there's divorces is selfishness. If you're going to be selfish, think just of you, not of her. And you're going to think the other way. You won't be happy. Selfish people are never happy. Just, they just aren't. Because they never quite get everything their way. And then quarreling. Don't quarrel. It's all right to disagree. I hope my wife doesn't always agree with me because sometimes she's right. You know, once in a while. <laughs> but quarreling, see, I've seen them yell, you know, throw stuff again, break. I remember one woman broke every dish in her house. She's so mad at her husband. Well, I went over there and saw it, and I said, uh, I guess we'll buy some new dishes. <laughs> see, you know, I told you. But then, finding somebody else. Now today, you oh boy, good looking guy. He even said that about you, didn't she, today? She said, nice looking guy. Uh, and, uh, you know, you, you, that's why you came here. Otherwise, you could just do what most Americans do anymore. It is live together. <laughs> but you want to do it right. And you are doing it right. Okay, I'm going to read one passage. All right. To our dear girl, whoso finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains. Stay for the Lord when you ain't like this. All right. Where can uh, you find a good wife? Now, I've been to India. I'm going to go for my 12th time, so I've been there a few times. And I've even performed some weddings there. And they have to pay. What have you had to pay the parents for her today? See, how much would you have to pay? 10000 20000 you know, see, how much is she worth to you? And they said, where can we find a virtuous woman? Her price is above rupees. Now, here's why you have such a wonderful partner in your wife, the heart of her husband, safely trust her. You trust her. You tell her things that you wouldn't tell anybody else. And she doesn't go out and gossip about it. You know what I mean? Exactly. If we told people a lot of things, they go out and gossip. No. Your wife is your best helper and your best friend. And that, now watch this girl. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Well, I've been married 52 and a half years and I can never think of one day of my wife. That's, that's a gift from God to give you somebody that sticks with you. You know what you're going to be able to do? You're going to become electrician. You're going to become plumber. You, you don't know this, but I do. <laughs> You'll be able to do it. You're not home. you got to get this fixed. You know, You'll do more stuff than you ever dreamed. It's wonderful to have a wife. I think my wife can do a lot more things than I can. <laughs> you did the good girl. And you know, she's 73, and when I look in her face, I see such a beautiful girl. <laughs> and that's what you see in your wife. 
isn't she something? <laughs> so it says to live joyfully with the wife uh, of your youth. Did you come up? Isn't this a good ring bear? You, don't, you ought to see some of the ones I see. Man, they about drive me crazy. <laughs> no, yeah, I've been watching you. You've been so good. Now, I'm going to ask you uh, a question. And I expect you to say, I will. All right, then. Is that okay if I say again? All right. And you're, oh, Danielle, who I was going to say, guess he's not home. I'm glad I asked you. All right. Will you have this woman to be your wedded wife? To live together after the teaching of the scriptures. Because that's how you're going to have a happy home. If you leave God out, it won't go good. Right. To be, uh, let's see, will you uh, love her? That won't be hard. <laughs> She's a sweet looking girl. And uh, comfort her. There'll be days when somebody in the family died or some friend or something. And uh, let's see what we have here. <laughs> I don't know this by heart, shouldn't have friends. <laughs> and the keeper in sickness and in hell. Where she got sick? I know, man, he watched over his wife for 21 years. See, that's tough to do. You know, he's got a lot of go to him. <laughs> but he watched over for 21 years. So that's, see, these sound easy. But maybe they're not, right? And keep her in sickness and in health and forsaking all others. It isn't that you'll never see another pretty girl. You will. <laughs> but this is your wife. This is a girl that you promise to be faithful. And they'll wrap the way in your bed and say, oh man, my wife only knew I did this and that. No. All right. But you gotta have God help. <laughs> right? Keep only under her as long as you both shall will. Okay, will you say I will to that? I will. All right. Glad you said that. Uh, you threw me off because I got Jeanette in my mind. Oh, look at Danielle, okay. I, I think he's Dan, you're Danielle. That's pretty easy. All right. But you have this man. Now you're thinking about it. To be your uh, lawful wedded husband and live together after God's uh, teaching in the holy estate of matrimony. You know what I liked when I saw the uh, wedding license? Zero, zero. I don't see that half the time. <laughs> One, two, you know, these kind of things. So that's good. She's a good girl. She pays attention, right? Oh, that's hey, get that for me. I you know what that is. <laughs> yeah. Jesus, that's your vows on That's why it's important. At least the crowd's with us. <laughs> I got it all on tape. <laughs> I had this Chinese wedding. The place was full. Oh, and I said, uh, "Kiss your bride." Because that'll come up in the open. And I said, well, you're either going to do it or we're not going to have a wedding. So he kissed her. It took him two minutes to kiss her. When he kissed her, it was about two seconds. <laughs> Just bang, you <he> done. <laughs> All right. Daniel, you, got, you can turn and get hold of both hands. All right. And if I fall off. I, Daniel, take thee. I, Daniel, take thee. Daniel. Daniel, yeah, okay. Don't do that wrong. To be my wedded husband. No. Oh, I'm doing the wrong one. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you guys saw this paper, you'd see. <laughs> Everything else in the book is new, but not the, not the marriage thing. <laughs> All right, let's start again because you... You do mean this, Lord. Yeah, you are doing it. Right? 
Hi, Daniel. Uh, Daniel. Uh, Daniel. <laughs> the, the Danielle. If I miss it, you just correct it. All right. Say it. Hi, Dan. Take you, Danielle. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. It's nice to have somebody that you love and they love you. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. That's the best prop you'll ever see her. But <laughs> saying that'll be the worst time. But we'll yeah, go for him too. All right. <laughs> My wife gets up some time with her hair all curled and everything. I love that girl anyway. <laughs> all right. For richer, for poor. For richer, for poor. What have you inherited a million dollars? She said, see, all right. For, uh, let's see, for Richard, for poor, for uh, sick, oh, what, sickness and in health. Sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. Now look in her eyes. I promise you. I promise you. You made a wonderful promise to this girl. Now you're thinking. You want to go through with this? All right. <laughs> because you're the one a lot of burdens fall on. All right, Danielle, take thee, Dan. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. From, that, from this day forward. For better, for worse. All right, now don't forget the worst part. Someday you have to pick up socks, dirty socks. You know, women get kind of bad sometimes. And remember, I love the guy. All right. Uh, for uh, better, for worse, for oh no, for riches. Oh, for oh, Pastor here, he had another class of something. Uh, for poor, okay. You can say that. For rich or for poor? Yeah, pretty easy. All right. And uh, you're going to keep these vows till death do us part. Till death do us part. Yeah. And now look in his eyes. I promise you, my faith. Yeah. That's the most you can give of me. I feel like a very rich man because I have a very good wife. I go to foreign countries and uh, I've been in 55 of them and they say, uh, uh, are you a rich man or something? I said, I'm rich because of my wife. <laughs> That's who makes me rich. Well, let's bow in prayer. Have you got a song? Okay, we'll, we'll pray. Because without God, you're not going to make it the right way. But God will never fail. All right. Father, we're so happy that this young couple fell in love. And one day saw this girl and thought, what a wonderful girl. <laughs> I'd love to marry her. And here he is today, at this altar, saying his vows to this girl. Danielle, God, thank you that she fell for him and is willing to share his life and be a blessing to him. And we pray they'll not be a selfish couple. They can just them their selves. But may they be a sharing couple, hearts knit together, God, in true Christian love. So bless them and encourage them. And the next time we see them, and we hear a good word from them, how glad they are that they said their vows before you. And I'm sure they mean them. Help them to keep them. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we'll have a song, and then you turn back. <laughs> Give us this.
why it's so important to pull for each other. And don't let anybody come in your house and talk against your wife or against your husband. That's your wife. By God's help, you chose her. You hope God led you to choose her. And you'll find out after five years. But she looks like an awful good girl. There's no other mother. She's like anything. No, just be who you are. I mean, that's good. All right, now three things keep out of your home. Keep dirt. Don't run a dirty house. It's all right if it's messed up, you know what's on it. Dirt out. See, the fear of the Lord is clean. And clean in your heart, clean in, you know, in your outward. All right, secondly, uh, <coughs> Somebody's been to my wedding, he's helped me here. Debt. Keep debt out. That's what you argue most about. 85% of your arguments are over money. So what I do with my wife, I say, how much will it cost you to run, you know, run the house? I give her so much a week. And if she needs a little more, I do that. <laughs> but see, that way we haven't had a crossword about money for you know, years and years and years. And the devil. He'd love to get in your home. So take your Bible each day and read it. My wife and I read five to ten chapters a day. Read one. Start in the book of Romans or in the book of John. You read half, she reads half. 
and then stop and pray. And those kind of people never get anymore. They check this out. I don't know who checks all this stuff out, but we, we preachers read it all. All right. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in your heart and in your home. And I'm telling you, I love to go home. Because when I go home, I'm the most popular guy there. <laughs> You're going to be the most popular. Even though there's five kids like we had. <laughs> and that's, uh, you know, you've got somebody that cares about you. And that makes her a good cook. She don't give you television dinners and stuff like that very often. <laughs> All right, give her a big kiss. Mr. and Mrs. Is it I haven't said congratulations to the bride yet. Did you? Yeah. I haven't done it yet.
dead reporter. Oh, well, this guy's being tortured now, but he was, he was as good as a boy could be doing that job. Why don't you have a seat? Hey, Gordon. Let's go take more pictures in front of the arch. 